Good evening, good evening. I am coming to you this evening from the Pocahontas building after a 12 hour day. Clearly we started uh, this morning with a 7 a.m. Uh, committee meeting for health, welfare and institutions. Had a very long docket that went into the 10 o'clock meeting for uh, the, the full committee. Went right into caucus meeting, right into session. And then it was an evening of general laws and more HWI. And then we had our Black Caucus meeting today. It's been um, a long one, but I wanted to make sure that I still had time uh, and dedicated time to, to give you an update. So there are a few things. First, happy Black History Month. We started our Black History Month speeches uh, on the floor of the House of Delegates today with the chair of the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus, Lamont Bagby. Uh, Delegate Bagby uh, represents uh, Henrico. And I mean, just gave an amazing, amazing speech this morning. Uh, I will be sure to, to amplify that video so that everyone can see it. And just really, it was a great way to get February of 2022 kicked off. And so uh, each day you will hear members of the uh, Virginia Legislative Black Caucus uh, give speeches, illuminating facts and history and just really telling the truth of Black history and Virginia history. Uh, and so stay tuned for that. Um, I, uh, If you caught it this evening, I had the honor to be on Channel 13 with Alex, who asked me uh, some really good questions about a bill I'm carrying to help restore and preserve African-American cemeteries in Isle of Wight County in Surrey. And one of the things is, how, how did you end up working on a bill across the water? And it's because my great, great, great grandfather and his wife, uh, Thomas Poole, are in one of those cemeteries. And so uh, Rosa Turner came to me and we worked together for this bill. Now, what possibly will happen is even if the bill doesn't get passed, it, it may happen through regulations that we get that $3,600 in order to um, give it to the nonprofit for them to take care of those uh, cemeteries to really honor the history and the legacy of those that that came before us and really helped us get, you know, to where we are today. I do want to point out that there are a lot of pieces of legislation that are really rolling back on some of the progress that we made uh, today, particularly we had House Bill 203. What that does is undo everything that Delegate Simon and I worked on for the Borrower's Bill of Rights for those of you, us, <laughs> that have student loans. And so we worked to get the student loan ombudsman office, uh, and then we got the student um, loan borrower's Bill of Rights. And so we want to make sure that we keep those intact. And so I'll put information in uh, the caption on how you can really follow that bill and make sure that we are protecting borrowers of um, education loans. And so some of us were not able to get an education without those loans, and we need the same protection. That um, debt is the same level, uh, second to mortgages, and mortgages are highly regulated. For student loan debt to not be as regulated, at least we need the borrower's bill of rights to make sure that we're being protected as consumers. Um, and then another one was House Bill 539. So uh, last year, I believe it was last year, it was either 2020 or 2021, uh, Delegate Lasheries Aird was able to get a bill passed that really helped ease the access for those with, um, they needed a second chance for higher education. And it really banned the box on um, higher ed applications to get your first foot in the door. Once you've gotten out, you, you know, served your time for the crime and all that, you know, people want to say, to really be able to help you to get onto a better trajectory. And so we have bills that will help you get housing, will help you get food, um, and this would help you get education. But this bill, 539, House Bill 539, would roll that back, the progress that we're making. So you want to make sure that you're reading the bills because the, the title of the bill might sound great, but then you look at it and it's actually striking out the language that you liked. And so remember, when you're reading bills online, the italics is new words that that person wants to add to the code. The strikeout language is what is in the code, but they want to take out. And then regular font is what's already in um, the Virginia code. So that's how you can, can follow along. Um, and then I wanted to highlight one other bill um, that had bipartisan support, and it's much along the same lines of taking care of those at um, college. So it's House Bill 582 with Delegate Sickles. 
and it would provide that um, universities and, and places of higher education need to provide easy access to information for students to be able to um, learn about and apply for SNAP benefits. And it is a sad state of affairs that so many of Virginians need that assistance because we don't have livable wages, um, but that assistance should be readily available, especially for those that are seeking to, um, to further their educational journey. So again, it was a long day and um, some of us are not done just yet, but I did wanna stop in to give that update. If at any time there are questions that you have as you're following along the session, you wanna know what a bill does or you know my stance on it, uh, updates from my legislation will be forthcoming, especially as more of them are being docketed. Um, if you didn't see the last update, the last update talked about um, six of my bills, I believe. And so, we are making progress, making progress toward crossover, which is um, the 15th of February is the last day that we have to take action on bills that originated in the House, so the HBs or the House bills. So we're um, going to have longer committee meetings as uh, we got a little bit of a late start um, this session, but uh, seems to be moving along pretty well. So just drop in the um, comments if you have any questions or if you have any bills in particular that you're following along. And definitely, as always, I welcome your feedback. Thank you for following along. Thank you for engaging. This is a rep representative government only to the extent with which you engage. And so I look forward to connecting with you. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow.